Hey there, it's Ben Housel, and here in this tutorial, we're gonna have a look at how we navigate the timeline really quickly. So we're gonna have a look at some of the basic navigation tools you've got in the timeline, how we can add thumbnails to the timeline, how we can turn on and off waveforms. So if you're brand new to Final Cut Pro 10, then these tips and tricks are gonna be really useful to you. Being able to navigate the timeline quickly and easily using shortcuts or using the tools that are built into Final Cut Pro 10 are really essential to help you make your editing flow smoother. So if these tips and tricks are something you're interested in Final Cut Pro 10, then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button. And if you have any questions about Final Cut Pro 10, uh, something that's really bugging you, uh, something you can't figure out how to do, then please do leave a comment below. Um, and I always look forward to getting viewers' uh, questions and a lot of the videos that I create are answers to those questions. So without further ado, let's dive into how to zoom in and zoom out and navigate the timeline really effectively in Final Cut Pro 10. So there are three main elements we're gonna focus on in this tutorial. One is how we navigate clips, or how we move between the different edit points of clips, how we play forwards and backwards really quickly. The second is how we select edit points. And the third is how we kind of zoom in and zoom out of the timeline. And we'll run through some basic edits that we can do using shortcuts on the timeline as well. And if you look below, I've also created a PDF with all of the shortcuts listed um, in this tutorial. So the first thing we're gonna do is my three favorite shortcuts for navigating the timeline, and that is the J, K, and L key. So basically, the J key will allow us to play backwards, the K key will pause for us, which I just did, and then the L key will play forwards for us. So if we play forwards, you can see we're playing forwards, backwards and pausing with the J, K and L keys. Now the other great thing about these three keys is that we can control the speed at which we move through our clips as well. So if I hold down the K key, it's gonna move backwards when I tap J by one frame at a time, or forwards when I hold down K and tap L one frame at a time. If I hold down K and L at the same time, it's gonna play forwards at one third speed. And if I hold down K and J, at the same time, it's going to play backwards at one third speed. So we can do a lot of timeline navigation with those three keys. Now, the other keys that are right next to the JKNL keys that are useful um, are the semicolon and apostrophe, and those allow us to navigate to edit points. So my forefinger is normally on the J key, my middle finger is normally on the K key, and then you'll find that your little finger is on the semicolon and if you tap that it will take you to the previous edit point or if you tap the apostrophe it will take you to the next edit point so you can see here we can move between our edit points really fluidly and then when we're at our edit points we can play forwards and backwards really quickly we can also use the cursor keys to do the same thing so we can also tap the up and down cursor keys to move between edit points um, and if we tap the left or right cursor keys it's going to move forwards and backwards by one frame at a time my preferred method is the JKNL keys because we have the semicolon and the apostrophe there. And also I use I and O a lot to mark in and out points on the timeline as well. So I will select an in point and O will select an out point. And then if I want to deselect everything, I can use shift command and tap A and that will deselect everything. So as we're editing and using shortcuts, the one thing we might want to do is select our edit points. So as we move to a particular edit point using the apostrophe or the semicolon or the up and down cursors, whichever your preferred method is, then once we're there, we can use the square brackets to select the incoming out point, or we can select the right square bracket to select the outgoing in point. And you can see there's a difference between these two edit points. One is marked as yellow and one is marked as red. And that means where we have yellow visible, we have extra footage that we can work with. So if I just do a bit of uh, drag editing here, you can see I can stretch out this edit point, but I can't stretch out this edit point. There's no extra footage on the, the left of this shot of the restaurant sign. So basically, where we see yellow, we have extra footage. Where we see red, we have no extra footage. So that's a useful thing to know when you're on an edit point. Now, the other thing we'll see when we're on the beginning of a clip um, is this L. Um, at the beginning of the clip. And if we move to the last frame of the clip, which would be the previous frame, we'll actually see a sort of backwards L on the right-hand side of the screen. And this is useful when you're thinking about keyframing your clip. So often when you're keyframing, you wanna be on the very last frame of the clip rather than on the first frame of the next clip, which is where the 
shortcuts for navigating between edit points will be. So often I'll be moving to an edit point, holding down K and just tapping back one frame so that I see that edit point. And then if I'm making any animations in that clip, I can see the changes that I'm making on the last frame of that clip. So if we come back to this edit point and we can use the left square bracket and right square bracket to select those edit points. We can use the left and right square bracket to select those in and out points. So once we have those edit points selected, um, we can use the comma or the period or full stop key on the keyboard uh, to move that edit point. So if we tap the period, it's going to move that edit point forwards. And if we tap the comma, it's going to move that edit backwards. And you can see this edit will stop when I get um, that red marker back again. I can't move any further to the left of that, however much I tap. So if I select the out point there, and I keep tapping now, I can make that clip shorter. And if I come to the previous edit and select the in point, I can make the clip shorter at the beginning by tapping the period key or full stop key. Now, once I have an edit point selected, if I come to a certain point in my timeline and I can flip these. Um, so even though I'm not on the edit point now because I've got part of my edit point selected, I can still flip between the out point and the in point. If I select the out point there and tap shift and X, it will edit to that point. I can also do the same function. So I'm using shift command and A now to deselect everything. If I come through in my edit, if I use option and the left square bracket, it will edit to that point anyway. So I don't have to have a clip selected um, to be able to edit to that particular edit point. So you can see if I come close to the end here and hold down the alt or option key and then the right square bracket, it will edit to that particular point on the timeline. So if I come back to my edit here and mark my out point and come ahead in time and hold down shift and tap X it's going to extend my edit to that point in time so I've got a lot of control over modifying those edits using shortcuts on the timeline now one thing to mention as we're working through all these edits is that we have just the selection tool selected we're not selecting any different uh, edit tools as we're working here so if we come ahead in our timeline here, once we have layers here, things start to get interesting. So if I select the out point or in point here, you can see it's selecting those multiple in points um, for those connected clips. So if I do shift and X now, it's actually going to edit all of those in points um, on those connected clips. So if we play forwards where I can see all those layers and do shift and X, it's going to short on those clips at that particular point in time. If I tap X, it's going to select my main storyline. Um, but this is a selection of that range rather than a selection of the clip. You can see the handles on the edge here are slightly different. Um, and this is different um, to selecting the clip like this. So if we bring our playhead ahead in time to round about here, if I use Command and the up arrow, you can see I can select those different layers. And now with uh, the different layers selected, if I select the second layer or connected clip first, um, if I do Alt and the left square bracket, it's going to edit my in point to that particular point in time. If I do Command and the up arrow and just come ahead in time and do Alt and the left square bracket, it's going to edit that. So we can edit our in and out points on connected storylines um, using the Command up and down cursors and then Alt and the left or right square bracket. So we can also shorten these clips from the end. So Alt and the right square bracket will allow us to edit those clips from the end. And when I'm selecting clips where I had previously this clip selected, where the playhead is here, um, I can't use Command and the up and down arrow because my selection is not at the playhead. I have to use Shift Command and A to deselect all, and then command on the up arrow to reselect that second layer. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Command and Z is also a useful shortcut, so Alt, so command and up, and then Alt and the right square bracket um, to edit those 
clips so you can see now we flash between those different clips on the timeline. And again, you can see when I'm using my semicolon, it's moving between the edit points and also um, between the different clips on the timeline and the connected clips as well. Now, if we come back to our clips in the middle here, if I first of all deselect, so shift command A and then use command on the up arrow, it will select that clip. So X will select the range, shift command A will deselect, and then command and the up arrow will select my main storyline, even though I don't have layers above there. If I hold down control and command and tap the left and right arrows, it will allow me to select those clips um, in that area. So you can see I'm selecting multiple clips on the main storyline, and that would allow me to cut them, copy them, paste them, or go in and modify values for all those clips at the same time in the inspector. So again, Shift Command and A will allow us to deselect, Command up to select the first, Clip on the layer and then shift and then control command and the left or right arrow to select clips either side of our existing selection. Now shift command and A again will allow us to deselect it and if we come here one other shortcut that I use a lot um, if I just use command on the up arrow here to select the second layer is the V key which allows me to disable a clip so basically here I can enable and disable a clip on the timeline using the V key. And another shortcut that I use a lot on the timeline as well is Shift and Z, and that will zoom to my entire timeline. So to zoom in and zoom out of the timeline, I use Command plus and minus a lot, and Shift and Z to zoom to the entire timeline. And you can see that wherever the playhead is, if I zoom in with Command plus there, it's gonna zoom in on that particular point and if I am scrubbing through my clip like this, it's also going to zoom in on that red scrubbing playhead rather than the location of the white playhead. And the red scrubbing playhead is also interesting. It will allow me to use Alt and the left square bracket to make an edit as well. So if I land my playhead on a certain spot, so at the end of this clip, I think we'll cut this here because the red playhead for scrubbing, um, and scrubbing is turned on and off using this button um, here on the right hand side. Um, if we scrub to this particular point and hold down Alt option and the right square bracket, it's gonna trim that clip from the end. So we can zoom in, zoom out on our clips, Shift and Z to zoom to fit. And then also we can use Shift Command and plus and minus to increase and decrease the size of our clips. Now there's no audio on these clips here because I've muted it um, but if we bring that back up you can see that as we zoom in we're seeing the audio waveforms there and if we use shift command and plus it will increase the height of the thumbnail and also the audio waveform too. Now if you want more control over what's on your timeline um, then you can come up to the top right here and there are also options for zooming in and zooming out of your timeline and increasing and decreasing the height of your clips, as well as some options for showing different proportions of the waveform. So we can have more waveform than we have video, um, which can be useful if you're editing dialogue, or increasingly less audio waveform to no audio waveform when we just have the image visible. So that's a overview of some of the shortcuts that I use regularly when I'm editing with Final Cut Pro 10 on the timeline. Hopefully it's useful. If you have any questions about Final Cut Pro 10, then please leave them below. Um, and I'm growing a list of different answers to some of the questions that I'm getting. I hope you're enjoying the tutorials and tutorial reviews uh, for different plugins that you're getting on the channel. And I always appreciate the feedback that people leave. Uh, thanks for watching and I will see you on the next tutorial.